James. Yes, very much looking forward to this here. Tundra versus Asta here in the upper bracket. I'm here with Kezu and Fogged. Uh, we've just seen the draft, boys. Uh, what, what sort of standing out to you? What are you excited to see? Uh, do you think someone's got a bit of an edge here with this um, one? I would say that I really like the Tundra draft in this game. I feel like it's kind of what they stick to. They also have this last pick tempo with nine on the pango, so I feel like they're going to up the pace a lot in this game. Yeah, I have to agree. I do really like the, the, the style that they've gone for. They have this Doom that can always address the Slark, but we'll see, because they do have ways of resetting fights as well on Aster, but see how it goes down. Absolutely yeah, excited to see, because that Doom in particular, right, something that we, we haven't actually seen being played for a few days. It's sort of a hero that a lot of other teams are ignoring, but Tundra, as they always have been, they love to play the Doom, and they still very much feel that this patch, it's still absolutely a top tier pick. Do you, do you agree with that sort of uh, approach to the game right now? Um, not sure how much I agree with it, but it's definitely a 3-3 special. This guy loves this hero. Like, he's been playing it for as long as I know. Like, even back when I started, this guy was spamming this hero already. He plays it literally to perfection, and I feel like it's it soups them like very well. They're gonna help him later, he's gonna up the tempo when they help him, he's gonna get top net worth as he usually does, and then they kind of just go from there. Yeah, they tend to be just, they just put so much pressure with the hero. I feel like they're one of the few teams that actually makes the Scorched Earth always look yeah. super threatening, like in laning phase and stuff like that. Like one, two, three. And I'm a bit of a battle here. As Skeeter, he stepped up to the high ground, but Boka's gonna be the first to fall low as Tundra will find that first blood. I'll lose Skeeter in return. Fine not to come to an end yet. Big Tundra, crash. they want to try and push on for more. Shield crash pretty much onto the entirety of Astra as Nine looks to continue the chase. Astra, well they'll get their way well back well up well to the well high ground. So just a well one for one there. Cool, and you already see that Aster off of this, they have preparation. They already know what they're doing versus Doom. You see this ward that they place here, blocking out the camp, making sure that you can also watch when they're going to start creep cutting too, because that's what Tundra does, but more so blocking the camp so you can limit perhaps for what that Doom is going to be able to find at some point when it's Devour. Yeah, it's definitely one of the like more normal plays that you want to do against the Doom. You don't want him to get this mana burn creep. And also already, 3-3 will be there later, but he's already there now, top of the net worth. He did get the first blood, so good, <laughs> good start for him. And we're seeing you know, sort of this, this start where they're all very much grouped up around the mid. Does this lead to the potential for anything a bit different in terms of lanes? Is anybody trying to dodge one another with the setup? Ooh. Bit of a whiff spear there, but even a, if it did connect, Skeeter able to get up to the high ground in time. I mean, it looks like they're gonna put this Razor mid as Ori is playing it. He should be okay in this matchup. I would definitely say it's a slightly, pang uh, sorry, slightly Razor favorite in here. But you know, nine on his Pango, he's gonna get what you know what he will. He can always get away from the link. He's gonna get his CS. But most importantly, I think are later the runes and the rotations onto this Razor. He's very susceptible in this mid lane. Yeah, and I do like. I mean, that really good block there. Nine actually getting a bit of an advantage at the start here, so he will be able to couple it. We did see the mid ward get taken out from Siamese Cat. At least they did get that D ward. And having a look at these side lanes, already on top. Trying to make a bit of a go for 33 there. Okay, so the, uh, cool lane setups that they decided to do here. They put the CM bottom with the Mars to make sure that he's not. So that they can actually apply some pressure to the CK, because otherwise it would just be a CK free farming versus probably the two melee. So I feel like sure. this option. Yeah, we've seen this kind of with a, a, a few different melee off laners, right? Just yeah. having the CM down here, playing aggressive. And well, this just sort of allows you to use the, the full potential of this hero, the Crystal Maiden, very early on to to sort of the enemy's uh, uh, annoyance. I think it's very good for the bottom lane, first of all, but also, most importantly, I feel like Marcy can apply more pressure top against his Doom. It's usually the type of hero that he's very weak early on. Tundra are very good at using him aggressively with the Scorch Earth, as we have a nice little arrow without too much more connection. But to go back to the Doom, you want heroes that really pressure him in lane. You can jump him with the Marcy, pull him back, then the Slark comes in. So that is what Astar are looking for in this lane. And in terms of the Slark, you know, being Asta's final pick, how how good of a Slark game is this for Mone? I mean, what, what's sort of top of the, the list in, in terms of things that he's got to be concerned about? Are there going to be timings of this game that it won't be too easy for Mone to, to find space or to make aggressive moves? I think it's a pretty good Slark game. Of course, the Pango towards the end is definitely good against you. He can always chain stun you. Maybe with the Axe, there's a lot of damage. What he has to watch out for is kind of to not get doomed. It's going to be his biggest downfall in this game as 3-3. But Monet, he's low, he has to be careful. Yeah, for sort of throughout that entire move. Oh, oh, Taking his with the tower, put the fairy fire. And he will just make it away there. Some early aggression here from Tundra oh underneath God. that tower. And the, the, just the spam and the harass keeping Monet incredibly low here. That chain lightning, Thanks almost getting him there. And use the half salve there. Barely gonna actually get much of it out of it there. They have no tangles. Feels no. a little bad for them here in this top lane. There's definitely a lot of space here for Tundra in the next coming waves. And look how many, I mean, they have mangoes, right? 33. We've seen this actually a yeah. lot from Tundra throughout this whole tournament. They are just mango advocates. Even sometimes when you see heroes that probably don't use that many, like Doom, mm -hmm. this is a game where he's getting it. It works perfectly because he does have that 
chain lightning that's coming out on Monet. Yeah, that's the AOI 2000 big brain, you know, coach input. He's definitely helping them with the yeah. mangles. I know he's always been, you know, very high up on that. Even if you play weaker lanes, if you have more consumables in specific moments of the lane, it can really make like such a huge, huge difference. No, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, see that. yeah, only four CS right now for Monet. He's not having a fun time against this aggressive duo of Tundra that's been put against him top. Yeah, and bottom snag. He does get the shield off on himself first. He's able to turn, get a blast off onto XXS. I think that shield actually saves him. I think he actually does go down otherwise from the rebuke and hit. Seeing so far in the, the mid lane, pretty much dead even. 13 for 2 against the 13 for 1 between Ori and 9. Mm -hmm. No struggles to be had there. Bottom, XXS still very much prepared with plenty of regen. Pretty much a full one, very far in a south, so. He's, uh, he's fit to sort of take a, a bit of harassment from Snaking and Skeeter in this setup. But and so the CS is, is fantastic, you know, free farm for the Mars on the Earth, this bottom lane. But Skeeter should also, this is why they go for this CK pick. Every time I do, I've been seeing this a lot from Tungeon, when they see like oppressive off laners, just these pressure heroes sometimes, that just have a lot of spam, CM, of course, with any type of spammer. They pick this type of CK, because he's just a self-sustainer. He doesn't need to buy too much regen. He just sits in lane and attacks. Yeah, he, he also works incredibly well with Lich. It's kind of what yep. Lich wants to have in the lane, someone aggressive, but at the same time, he has all this inbuilt region of Monet, top lane. I mean, poor old Monet is just not having an easy time at all here. Sack got another one through the Ooh. chase down, and there's the chain lining to finish him off. Monet taken down the same time down bottom. They'll attempt to get aggressive onto Skeeter, but the shield's up from Snaking. Skeeter trying to step back. Mango's being popped here by Siamese Kai. He's got another frostbite it's close. and a blast. That last right click, though, not enough to take him down. Skeeter, he'll be able to walk away. A very much a, an incredibly different story here for the beginnings uh, of both carries. You know, Monet is not having a fun time at all up top. Honestly, Skeeter's going to start having a pretty rough time too. No regen bottom. If he steps up, he just gets nuked and dies. See here, Monet and Boboka, they're going to try and trade back Go towards 33, but Monet's getting right click down pretty low by Saxa. Same to be said for Boboka. They're both incredibly low. Monet. The going to come out. Monet, he's not going to be able to finish your Saxa. Saxa kites him out with the lead. Oh and 33 God. getting another kill. Saxa will fall. But this top lane continues to be an absolute nightmare here for the Slark. Okay, I mean, this chain lightning is just devastating. I mean, you can see there the Scorched Earth damage, as I was mentioning earlier. Somehow, it always ends up building up. They make these... They make this ability just look so damn powerful in the laning phase. Tundra okay. are just so good at these early itemizations. He starts with the Wraith Band in the lane to give himself all the armor against the physical lane, then the Magic Wand, then you have the Mangles. He gets the, probably the best creep he can ask for in this lane. Sark, low HP hero, he hates his Chain Lightning. Of course, he has Sax in his lane who's gonna help him as well. And this lane is one oh, mid lane. Bit of a setup there, they're able to get the connection with the arrow, jump four oh for nine, and that's gonna be Ori taken down. So Saxa really feeling this early game pressure from the plays up top to now making these moves towards the mid lane. He, he has a good hold of the, these sort of early states of lanes for, for Tundra. He has a lot of freedom now too, and when the, resp like, the respawn's gonna come out, it's gonna be around this mix six minute power rune. So Soxa, he's gonna stay around here. He's gonna be able to play around that rune also to ensure that the Pango's able to get it. Yeah, this is absolutely huge, especially in these lanes where like you do this lane swap where you're like, yeah, you know, Razor's gonna do well mid, maybe slightly win, but now this, this kill can truly offset it. Luckily for Astro, you know, the rune does spawn bottom, but Razor still P is on cooldown now, so maybe someone can refill Nine's bottle or he gets some resources. He could make a move to top again to kind of put even more pressure on Monet in this top lane, and Razor will not be able to respond to this move. 33, just... Arcane boots. Yeah, yeah he's the spam is going to gonna increase it. This man's not running out of mana anytime it's, soon. It is going to be really nice with the Mirana, because Sox is having such a good game. He's level 5 already. So the Star Storm combo plus Arcane boots plus the nuke, they're going to push Monet out of lane again immediately. See bottom. Definitely one of the, the better parts of the map for Asta so far. Yeah. XXS top net worth. Trying to turn towards Skeeter, but again, Snaking able to provide enough protection to make sure that Skeeter can't quite get burst here by the combos between XXS and Siamese Cat. I'll try another attempt here with a Frostbite. A bit of a pull from Snaking. Make sure that XXS isn't able to close in and follow up with any further spells. So Skeeter's back under the safety of the tower. Snaking! Oof. Ooh, actually gets the very fire up in time. Yeah, so close. And that'll allow him to survive as well. This top lane is definitely uh, the biggest pressure point in this game for Tundra. They already got the tower fairly low. Monet not too happy in this lane, as we've mentioned multiple times. And I think if Tundra get to take this top tower before Astro get to pressure bottom much more, sure, they're doing well in the lane, but tower still full HP. And Razor, not the best hero at rotating. So I feel like Tundra will soon look to maybe step up the tempo of the game, maybe eight minute mark, help nine in mid, and then look to rotate him into one of the side lanes.
That could definitely be a pretty difficult recovery outlet for Monet. He's actually putting two points in the essence shift if you see that as oh, well, too. So okay. not having the dark pack maxed probably yeah. pretty early on is going to really hurt. All right. I mean, that's my kind of slot, but <laughs> it's, it's going to be hard to play with a couple of early points in the passive. Right, this is devastating. Yeah, the lane is just so oppressive. It's so much mana that they have because those arcane boots are just keep spending. Monet might just die again. They're going to chase him out. See if they can find him in the trees after the pounce. Whoop, do catch a, a quick glimpse of him there. Oh. So if they can line up the arrow, they can. Wow. Monet will be going down again. <laughs> and you can see there on the net worth, I mean... And the Doom's up again. It is up, <laughs> it's ready to go. He hits the 633 and he's ready to drop that Doom down. And he's got a Mango, so now he's got mana for Scorched Earth. Or with the TP. And in fact, they'll respect the TPs. As Tundra, they'll bail out of there completely. So they won't get a kill off the back of the Doom, but they do force that reaction from Mori, who heads towards top. You can't blame 33 for that. You know, sometimes you're really feeling that like, kind of momentum that's coming from those kills. It does end up being a wasted Doom, but does end up forcing a rotation from Ori. Now Monet, as we said, you know, has to get out of that top. He's got to recover somehow. I mean, you're seeing on the net worth pretty much that the same amount on him as, as Sax has been able to pick up from these early game moves. Yeah. Yeah, I think putting the Sark here in the mid lane is usually a pretty nice rotation if you have a hard time as a carry and you can't really jungle yet. Going into mid is nice, it's easy for you to get XP and gold. Mid laners usually at this point just want to push out the wave and, you know, run away, maybe go gank another lane. But at the same time, Tundra really like their play. They pop the Doom Force, TPs, and they get out. So if they can find the Voka here in the trees, Nine. Not the Rolling Thunder, but actually ooh, a nice bit of a Fancy. spot that the Voka steps into. And nine, he's not gonna quite get the, the correct read on that. Very good little uh -oh. hide, oh, hiding spot for Baboka, and a spot that, oh, oh he's gonna he step out him. into now, now though, so he will die. Uh, will still go down. Uh, give him a little respect tip though. It's a good spot. Anybody who goes top, that's just the devastating lane, really. And yeah, like you mentioned, the mid lane, Monet's there, but 33 comes to him, keeps putting him down. Still not level six on Monet. Let's see this, yeah. This top tier one tower. Unlikely to have anything Radiant done defensively by Asta for it. Mm -hmm. And Soxa with his early rotations also. Now he's level seven. Seven, yeah. Three, ten minutes. And he's already got this like, aggressive ward that he placed earlier. So he can make these rotations and look to pretty much kill most of the cores. That burst damage is nothing to laugh at. See, Asta trying to make the aggressive move here towards nine and Soxa. He got a mid shield crash. See if that's going to be enough to take him down. I think it should be nine. He's caught on the high ground. Asta able to kill off the Pango. Oh, the worst feeling for Pango when that happens. What a nice Skeeter. I'm going to go with the ult. Turns quickly. Destroy his Siamese cat. Yeah, the Pango would have lived for a sure. short. He would have lived until he had another swashbuckle, got out by Boboka with a perfectly timed uh, dispose to cancel that. In the meantime, bottom lane, Mr. CM also. And right now, the state of the game is definitely not good for Aster. I mean, you can see it on the network already, but it's mainly about the state of the map right now. They did lose their top tower. Now the map is more open for Tundra. And Aster don't really have the lineup that is like going to push back, smoke into you and kill you, or have an easy time opening up the spot tower. So I'm really kind of interested to see how they want to play these next two minutes. Is it just going to be keeping your cores, you know, as far as as possible to get all the lanes pushed out? Or are you going to smoke three people from mid, perhaps to the Mars bottom and open up there? Because I think Tundra, they will counterplay you for sure. I think they want to try to at least try to get some attention off the top lane. So I think moving to Mars, moving XXS, he's the strongest one on the map. It feels yeah. like right now with Ori, so it does feel like it could be the good move. Yeah, they're trying for it. it does look like Tundra might have the read. Skeeter, very defensive. Let's see what they can set up here. Baboka also feeling rather strong. Level seven. And get the setup. Quick rebound over towards Snaking. Nice quick kill. Radiance Tries for the spear. Won't quite connect. Should be able to go for the finish on the tower here. Let's see if the Tundra does look to respond. They do have, I think, most TPs at the ready. Never mind. Pangos isn't ready, so yeah, bot. Yeah, they're gonna chill. They're gonna be happy to oblige. Smoke move from Aster. Skeeter is like, all right, see you later. He's gonna TP out, keep farming. They're gonna keep pushing into the whole top lane. Perhaps try to pressure Monet a little bit, which is uh, not too easy. But at this point, if you can just make the Slark farm maybe one wave all the time in his tier two and steal half his jungle, that's already okay. Like, look at Slark's net worth. He is suffering and he's gonna need help. I think they even like pulled, the, I think they side pulled the hard camp too. It's very good. It's a, just a beautiful play. Like when you, yeah. it's sometimes it's hard to invade or really stop them from farming. So the best thing you can do because carries are getting better and better. You stay in this lane, you wait for the wave to push in. Well, joke's on you, I'm pulling it. Yeah. Up on him. 
Set up with the tumblers toy into the arena, but it's close to the tier two task. So TPs will be coming in. To the three of them can burst for a skeeter, they can. The question is if they can get out without any sort of trade occurring as Saxa and Knight. Thinking about chasing, but Aster, they're able to break far enough away. And they'll get away with that one without any sort of trade going back the way of Tundra. Yeah, look at this. They pulled the top wave again. Poor Monet. He's trying to get these waves that come in, but 33, he just keeps pulling it in, denying a couple. Yeah, I mean, teams are just getting a lot better at, you know, playing perhaps a little bit of a slower game, knowing that if you just take the tower and you just kind of leave the area, Slark would just free farm. But you can see in his net roof that's not really happening. Astro, though, in the meantime, very nice play on the bottom tier two. Punishing Skeeter a little bit for perhaps being slightly out of position. This Dispose combo, they kill him and they force some TP, so this is definitely good for the game right now. Close to, getting pretty close to BKB on Ori, too. That's going to be one of their, their first big timings for sure. Look for perhaps the BKB timing with Mars's Blink Dagger. He's about a thousand gold away. So, you know, BKB might come out slightly before that. But when they have those two items, it's definitely goal time for Aster to up the tempo a little bit in this game. Yeah, he can kind of just run through, not have to worry so much about that Pango and Lich, the burst damage that can come out. Not on Tundra, though. Looks like they're the ones making the first move. I'm going to see if they can maybe catch them before that timing. Oh, this would be huge time for them to grab the Razor if they can, but... Aster, defensively postured. Good positioning here from Siamese Cap. Just want to give any information. Make sure the Tundra can't freely step up to the high ground. Baboka also ready to back up Ori if any fight comes in his direction. And by the way, even though that looks like a Sentry Ward, everybody, that is an Observer Ward. That blue one next to the, yeah, you know, the sneaky one the Tundra tends to do. That is an op. Oh, it wasn't this time. Sorry about that. <laughs> they got Jibated. me in shitting. There was a couple, a couple of times we've seen them doing that this tournament. I was actually checking. It's this one yeah. on the left yeah. side. Sorry, the one that's just right next to it. There we go. I mean, if it's it's if it tundra. debates us, it probably debates the players, too. It really does. <laughs> Naming the Sentry Ward. Looks Naming the Absorbed Sentry Ward. Maboka. We'll see if the two of them got the damage with the ult for the CM and the control of the Dispose. They certainly do. Good quick move there from Asta as Nine caught by surprise. Uh, Baboka's definitely got the Nikes on. He's in the right places at the right time, doing some good jukes, getting the right kills on the map. He's definitely, he's stabilizing the map right now. Like, if Astro keep getting to do this until they get this BKB blink, and, you know, let Monet kind of recover towards his, for now he's looking at a Diffuser Blade, that's definitely good for them. I like how they were just, like, sticking around the Razor, too. They're like, Ori's getting kind of close, like 700, 800 gold away from BKB, just yeah. sticking right next to him to ensure that he can try to finish it. Very much closing that bit of a lead that Tundra did get towards the beginning. Eight to seven here, 15 the minutes in. That's the 1,000 gold difference between the teams. Still a, a long road to recovery for Monet. They're definitely slowing down the pace to, to allow him to have that chance. He's able to farm this bottom half of the map with the tower already gone. A pretty safe area it feels for the Slark to be in. Yeah, and it's 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 pretty nice because they did get those kills on Skeeter, right? They slowed him down, so Monet, he's actually able to now catch up because that dark pack. So he's actually yeah, just pretty much tied his yeah, they're, so they're all things all things looking good. Yeah, they're pretty much even networks. Like Aster made a very nice recovery in this game. Like if you consider that this was somewhat of a slow game where the Doom lineup is kind of bleeding in network, you're doing a good job definitely moving around the map. And now they've played the heroes in the right areas. Now Ori is gonna have this BKB up, so I'm really looking forward to Aster just kind of looking for the lanes in a good position and then smoke it up. Yeah, he's the, he's the strongest here on the map right now on that Razor. Yeah. He runs into the fight. Only thing he has to have to watch out for is that Doom, of course, if it catches him pre-BKB. But it's not a Blink Dagger on the Doom. It is a BKB rush that's going to be coming out, so it shouldn't catch them off surprise. That Doom, in I say. 33 himself very close to his own BKB. Defusal and picked up by 9. Just sacks up, trying to get that. Vlad's done. Looks like both teams hitting a bit of a timing, but Aster, I would say, one that they probably want to play around a little bit harder. The Haste Rune, the BKB, the Blink Dagger. Like they're waiting for an opportunity, or he's pushing out this mid lane. The next one, two fights might be very scary for Tundra. Yeah, you do have the team fight with the Pango and 3-3's Doom. He's closing in on his BKB. He definitely wants that before this next fight breaks out. But if Aster hit their initiation, I'm not sure Tundra have a very good response unless, you know, Snake King gets off a very good shield into Chain Frost. So if XXX's jump is good as oh. bottom. That's a bit of a leap over the spear, but Saxa, he'll still take the, the brunt of the attack here from Aster. 
to find him off the back of that movement. We'll see if they can sweep around for more. They do pop the ult here from yeah. Ori. He still has the Eye of Storm active. Actually, already in the mid, but Oka, he, he gets the straight-up catch onto Snaking. So, a quick connection from Aster towards the mid. This should allow them to have a good shot at taking this Tier 1 tower, or at least forcing some sort of reaction from Aster. I mean, Boboka, from Tundra. Boboka's level 11, by the way. Just going to be pointing that out as well. Level 10 on the Mars, but level 11 on the Marcy. So, he's going to be going for this transition. Oh, and that's all they. Quick jump, they found 33. It's a big grab. They're in with the setup, and Ori, he'll be able to follow Ooh. up with the damage. BKB popped as he's able to continue to stay on top of 33, take him down. Nine, with the Rolling Thunder. He's not going to be able to stick around to look to take anyone out in return. He's going to opt for the TP out. Ooh, good attempt to maybe find him at the end of the Rolling Thunder with the spear, but the Rolling Thunder lasts too long, and Nine will manage to escape. But we're definitely seeing your Asta making some smart moves now, and... And Tundra very much getting caught off guard each time. Yeah, he's in space and space. Monet, that's, that's loving life. He's doing like, he's just enjoying it. He has a Diffusal Blade now. His team is doing all the right things, all the right moves still. Tundra do have this 1k net worth lead slightly, but the game is, uh, I would say, slipping a little bit out of their hands. They do have this BKB now on 3-3, so we can look, you know, for them to play a little bit more aggressive. I don't know if Nine is calling, yo guys, I want my blink. I'm close to it too, because initiating for them is still a little bit, you know, it's not the easiest. Yeah, you have Moonlight Shadow, perhaps you want to look to abuse that, but an instant jump, you don't really have it yet. And yeah, definitely a lot awkward, for, more awkward for them to approach inside of that fight. Skeeter also, now he does have Echo Saber. This could maybe also be that timing. It is going to be coinciding soon with that Blink Dagger of Nine. So maybe that's when they look to make their first move too. Because Aster, it's been them for the last few moments. Boka, uh, he's going to have the ult back up. And as you said, with the very good levels that he's been getting, he's pretty much level 12. That's a big timing also once you get that. Super close. Can still just get burst though. That's the one thing he is playing versus a CK zone. Versus in some of these like carry versus Marcy matchups, the Marcy can actually do decent versus some of those. CK can actually just blow him up if he's not careful. Trying over the Boca. aggressive jump at Baboka. Immediate reaction from Tundra. They'll throw down the chain frost. Baboka uh, will die for that one. A little over aggressive. Yeah, definitely nice pick here by Tundra. They also must know they have a drums plus rave pack completed. This team is definitely very good at you know combining your small little timing. So you get this pick up straight into Rose. Do they get away with this though? I feel like Aster. They've, they've got a decent chance of taking this fight. I don't know if Tundra can get away with this one. They don't kill it too fast. And there's the jump from... Ooh, a little off the mark with the spear. The Will Doom? the nine still able to get the Rolling Thunder off? And he's going to head straight over towards the race. But the BKB was off in time for Mori. It's about so to end, run though. past the Rolling Thunder. There's the Diffuser Blade slow indeed as the BKB comes nine to is the nine. Continues to control it, but the eye of the storm hurts nine badly. And now Mori is ready to tie it up. Jumps in with the pals. Takes down nine. XXS pushes Saxa off towards the side. Finally, Ori goes down. But Mone, he's still looking pretty strong. He's ready to chase over towards the Lich. Take out another. Now turns towards Skinner. Skinner's surrounded here by Asta. It's going to be a triple kill for Mone. Oh, he's back, baby. I mean, Shows up. Level 14 now. Might even get I another grab. I guess indeed get another one here. 33. It's the end of the Moonlight Shadow buff. He's going to try for the TP out, but they found him. Oh. They found him. They're going to be able to take out another Asta. Mone. Ultra <laughs> kill. Well, this, this was the little old slot that was getting bullied in the laning stage, but look at him now. I mean, beautiful fight, really, for Master. It's really quite a lot that Ori gets the BKB up as the Doom hits him because it kind of makes Tundra over-chase and over-commit into this fight where they want to really kill this Razor, but then they're like, oh, God, wait, Slark has turned up, and we've pushed so far into, like, a Tier 2. Yeah. We'll see what happens here because of it. They get to drag so far into it. Like, when you have this Doom plus Pango lineup, you pretty much want to solidify and win the fight towards, like, the end of the roll, especially if you're dropping Doom and your BKB at the same time. They get dragged in very far. Nice job by 3-3 three, three to kind of, you know, finish and back off. But now, Monet, he's like, whoa, free real estate for me. I come in here, I have my top net worth, I show up for the team, and he, he just cleans up. Ultra kill for him, and I mean, his game is more than fine. I mean, yeah, it's looking terrifying now. You know, look at the distance between himself and Skeeter in terms of farm. You know, he's he's only behind the Doom. I mean, Doom Doom's a Doom. He's always going to exactly. be at the top. Yeah. I mean, he's, he pretty much has the Aghanim's finish now, so... Yeah. That's gonna just allow, allow it, allow him to really get into the back line a lot easier. This Lich, now his life is pretty much impossible when that does come in in those team fights. 
This is a pretty ridiculous recovery, really, for Master. And once you start getting ahead also now, you have the Slark. So yeah. any vision that Tundra has now placed aggressively immediately gets taken away. I mean, so if you're Tundra, how, how do you stop Mono from falling out of control in the next team fight? You know, whose job is it really to to kind of prioritize this slug, make sure that Mono doesn't get all this space to just go from target to target. You gotta do him, it really feels like Yeah, I, I think it's important for Tundra that this next fight, now that they do have two blink daggers, 3-3 three, three picked up his, that you make sure you combine the roll with the Doom so that there's no like weird Slark ult coming out or BKB pop from the Razor, because when they initiate with their spells, the, the fight, it, it has to pop. That guy needs to die within like two, three seconds. Then you can keep the fight going with the roll. And right now, both teams, they need to be looking at Roshan. So the next fights right now, it's all about whoever will, you know, get to claim the ages yeah like you mentioned before tundra has like this like this this lineup that really wants to explode in like those 10 to 20 seconds of a of those fights but aster if the fight continues and it goes long that's slark he's gonna just start taking advantage of that completely yeah aster want to play prolonged fights whereas tundra they need this really snappy and explosive like yep. you pop the phantasm roll doom you get one two kills and then you either disengage or you like go for roach whereas aster they want to chill a bit you know pop your arena kill one hero slark lingers around and they keep going like that See Asta off the back of the smoke, maybe seeing if they can start things out. Bait out the team fight, but already nines with the Rolling Thunder. They jump up there, drop the Doom down onto Ori, but Ori's going to be able to keep his distance. But Boca left on the front lines will go down. Nine charging over with the Rolling Thunder to set up for a second kill. They'll take out both supports, Tundra. This could get them that Roche now. They yep. have the Alpha Wolf Aura, they have the Raid Pack, the Drums, they have the Minus Armor that comes up from the Pango, so this time... I mean, the three cores are still time. strong from Asta, and there is no Doom in terms of the ultimate, and so no there thunder. may be a temptation to do this. I think they, they, they want to poke, at least, like maybe run so. over, throw in a spear for some vision. Ori, I think he wants to They're join the, the point. catch on the Mone. He's already had to put the Shadow Dance off the arenas down. They will immediately lose XXS. We'll see if Mone can find any cleanup this time. He's going to bail out. Jumps out with the Pounce. No longer a fight that Asta can choose to take, with XXS immediately dying at the start. Immediately is the right word. Where the hell did he go? <laughs> Yeah. Evaporated. Uh, I, I, there's definitely a chance where Aster can take that fight, but I think it has to be off of the back of Ori coming closer, using his body with the BKB and allowing XXS to play a little more safe because he doesn't have a BKB yet. So sending him in first, I think a little bit of a mistake, but Tundra, you know, they punish that, they get the Aegis, and now once again, they're in a convincing lead in this game. Aster, not to be... Uh deterred by the fact that the Aegis is in the hands of Skeeter. They'll look to hit up with a smoke. They gotta see go. if they can maybe catch Tundra whilst they're in this relaxed state of sort of spread out across the map. They'll they, look to Saxa. They gotta oh. take advantage of cooldown. Oh, the, the leaps. Leap on leap. Outplay the pounces from Monet. Uh, they won't catch Saxa here today. Instantly drops the Wraith Pack. Something to always watch out too. There is a Marcy on one side, so this Wraith Pack in most of these fights will be addressed from Baboka. And Monet, he is queuing up that shard, so of course wanting to be able to bail out the target that does get doomed if it's not him, we'll be able to protect them a lot of times with that death shroud. He's gonna pop the old hit to try and finish off the tower, but Tundra, they're gonna have something to say about that. Nine jumping forward with the rolling thunder. Ori immediately popping the BKB in response. We'll see Nine continue to chase up for the high ground. Skeeter's able to pull back Baboka back into nice his own back. clutches of the CK. As Baboka falls and the rest of Asta. Got to be very cautious now. Four versus five. They don't want to mess around with Tundra's Tundra just chasing them down back behind their tier twos. Aster tries to punish this, you know, the cooldown of the Doom. Weren't able to, and now Doom's going to be back up. So Tundra probably looking to continue to look for something, even if they don't have Rolling Thunder. Might just get to poke this tier two a bit. Skeeter is feeling strong. He's got BKB Aegis. On the flip side, Aster here, they, so they have the shard, as you mentioned, very good against Doom. So I think now if you're Tundra, you kind of need to Doom Monet or not use it unless the Rolling Thunder is really going to disrupt even if the shard does get dropped. And Ori, he is close to this AC and he currently has a DD bottled up. So right now, if you're Aster, very likely that they're currently communicating, yo, I have a DD still for a bit. Help me get this AC and then we can look to go together and take a fight. See top lane, Tundra. Huh, he's done this a lot on 33. Octarine is finished up already. Same build they did, I think. Or at least that we saw from Saxa do, at least on the Doom, I think it was the other day. Yeah, so first of all, with the Arcane Boots in the lane, he gets to split it for the lens. It definitely makes it easier to drop your Dooms and stuff. And I think also with, you know, all the refresher nerves and BKB mana costs, I feel like the Octarine really comes in nicely yeah. with the higher cast range and, most importantly, the bonus armor. And bonus most mana. importantly, oh, it's cool down on the, the minus. Yep, the more minus. Minus. <laughs> more money hit. How can I forget that one? Let's <laughs> have a look. We want Shadow from Tundra. They really want to try and do something around the mid with this Aegis on Skeeter. Look how they're backpacking even the Wraith Pack Soxa. When they're, when they're doing this play and walking through mid, backpacking so it doesn't reveal. Some quick little plays. Very cute. 
Now, if you're asked, are you, are you just trying to avoid fights for the remainder of this two minutes of Aegis time? Unless you see an opportunity that allows you to kind of go around on the backline of Tundra, I think you're better off just saying, okay, we can chill. They did have the DD earlier, that's like a little opportunity, you know, that can make it easier for you, but now, if it feels hard, you just don't really need to go for it. Aegis is still there for a bit. But if you see an opportunity where you can go around because you feel like maybe Tundra won't be ready, then that's really your time to shine. And it looks like that's kind of what they had in mind here. I think Hori might have actually gotten seen on the creep wave, creep wave in mid. He walked in and nuked as the smoke was getting popped. Let's see if Tundra caught that. See Asta. They are going to try and make a play whilst that Aegis still stands in the hands of Skeeter. They want to abuse the Slark vision. Fresh BKB on Radiant's XXS this fight. So if they can catch 33 before he's able to drop the Osma, but immediately 33 is able to do, but just as quickly, Ori was able to get the BKB off in time. The BKB is up for him, he'll start to back away. Same to be said for Monet, but Boca does get caught by the catch of Skeeter, but Monet's gonna jump in aggressively to try and help out and keep the Boca safe. And now Boca jumps in himself with the two-man rebound, and Rank's XXS with a flop arena, catches at them, three of them. But Boca will be the first to fall, but they found one in return. They'll turn towards Skeeter, take him down the one, frostbite control on tonight. Will allow XSS to get the double, and Asta, they can look to try and set up a Skeeter a second time round. He'll put the BKB, look for TP up, he's got five heroes beating it down. to him. There's no escape for the CK, as Asta will take the team fight. I mean, picture perfect the way they take this fight, right? They jump in, they show the Razor, they're like, doom me, please. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty much every single time, right? These reactions from Ori, I think he's got BKB every single time off that he's been doomed, pretty much. Radiant pretty much, power. seems like it. Yeah, and then you can just see the Slark shard, you know, these prolonged fights. If Asta get their BKBs off and they live through this roll and doom as we've touched on multiple times now. Radiant the fights will look like this if Astrid continue to play them as beautiful as they really have. Check it out here. Yeah. He runs in, doom, yeah, he pops BKB the BKB every on it. Here comes Monet, roll kind of not doing much. Yeah, sure, you do get onto the back line, and Boboka does end up dropping, but he bites back, it's close to the tier two. Back in action, Monet, it's, it's, it can find more. It's really good synergy the way they did the fight too. They all ran the same direction. Yeah. Sometimes you do see when it's like, Radiant's oh god, these type of panic plays gonna happen. Attack. It's one person run one way, one person runs Dying another. They all ran left attack. together, which, I mean, was perfect really for them for that fight. And now another DD. Couple other, couple more items I believe also picked up. I think they did get a gem now on the Crystal Maiden as well. And I think Baboka is about to have BKB too after using his buyback. So more timings also for Aster. Even though it did feel like Tundra with that Aegis had a timing themselves. Aster has shown that they can clearly take any of these fights if they do approach it properly with that Razor Wall. I like this. A bit of a farming uh, ult here from Baboka. Yeah, I just want to speed up the pick up on the BKB. Uh, they might. They're punishing like him. Kill him though. They'll see him in the mid. Get him with the jump. So, uh, a, a short-lived ultimate. But he's dead a while. To clean up that wave, at least before he got ganked, you know? Sure. So, an efficient use there. I like it. 70 seconds, though, he's gone. Yeah, it's definitely that's, that's gonna... He doesn't need to have his ult available if he's dead, you know? I'm gonna, true. I'm gonna die mid. That's Might as well true. use the ult to farm. Plus 100 gold. smart man. <laughs> These, these next fights for Tundra, it's very important for them. They, they are ahead in the game, but fights probably feel harder for them as they perhaps think they should. Uh, it's very important for them that they need to spot out this Monet Slark, which is not always the easiest task, right? Slippery hero, he knows if you do see him, because again, this roll plus doom, their best target by far is this Slark, because he will be able to save his teammates, and that is not something you want to play in into right now. See Asta. Walking in, even with the Walker dead. Why don't catch Tundra by surprise? Now, this is a moment that Tundra probably won't expect Asta to be bringing the fight towards them. What? We'll jump over towards Sax and leaping okay. all over the place. <laughs> but they will lock him down and take him out. <laughs> and now this is, the, this is the sweep to clear the vision also inside their jungle. They're starting to feel that there was pretty much, what, three wards actually? Or two or three wards placed down. So we'll be able to get at least one or two of those. Yep, and Walker respawning. So even though that gold advantage has been there for Tundra, it feels like Aster has been able to take every single one of the fights if they do just continue to do these approaches. Yeah. It very much feels that the, the 4k gold is basically the doom. It's the doom. Yeah. It is a doom effect, right? Literally. Yeah. So in terms of sort of the, the actual tangible value of, of, of sort of items that, that are available for both teams, it very much feels that we're pretty much on a, an even playing level right now. Second Roche is going to be very important for both these teams. They, teams at this level, they will both know that the earliest respawn will start within, you know, your next 50 seconds. Both teams, they're going to definitely play around that because Aegis, Shard in this game, it is a very close game. Yeah, the Netrif does say Tundra is ahead. But as we said, they have, they need to hit their conditions a little more in the fights to actually beat Aster. Yeah. Let's see if now with the third Blink Dagger, they're able to get that initiation a little cleaner. Skitter also has one. They also have a Bash around nine, so an extra form of maybe stun and control to keep them in the Doom so they can't reset as we've seen multiple times from Aster. Dyer are scanning. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. I'm very careful around this 
Bottom push here, Tundra. I'm just seeing if they were able to catch out anybody from Asta heading over to try and clear out the creep wave, but won't be the case. This tier one will be left alone defensively by Asta. Asta sticking together. Asta will always, also always know that Fanta has him on cooldown. It's being used to farm constantly. He showed them in mid. Yeah. XXX actually cleaned them up, so that is a little bit of an element that they always won't know that Tundra doesn't have. Asta just don't really care about the spot tower. You don't want to get baited away. You just took back your jungle when the second roach is about to respawn. Instead, good job by them to invade the enemy triangle. One thing I want to say about the speeder blink dagger, I think another way that I haven't touched on yet is that if you jump multiple targets at the same time, obviously Sark can't really save all of them, right? For sure. So maybe you can jump the razor with the roll, but you jump Mars or whatever with the CK, and you, even though he saves one, he cannot save the other. So that could be another condition that Tundra are currently playing for. I almost want to see like one of the cores maybe carrying a dust then. Because if the fight's going to get so split up, you yeah. can't always depend on these supports to be able to cover versus the Glimmer Cape that's on the CM. So maybe one of them will have to sacrifice an item slide. I see the at 33 He's had the dust in his backpack, but he keeps swapping that between the Wraith Band. But always have to do be careful if you do go for split up fights and don't have any detection. Coming up to that potential time for Roshan. Just about a minute until they'll be back in play. Level 18, XXS, about to have level 3 ults. Buybacks and this Dire Outpost are going to be crucial in this uh, next version of fights. Both teams, they need you need to like trade your BKBs for the Doom spells. If you do end up dying to Doom, you can buy back and take the second Aegis, and then that will really help you, you know, play against each other. So both teams should be talking about this right now. Perhaps if Tundra want to take a fight, you need to smoke, take the Outpost first, and then fight so that Astro ju can just buy back and come back into it. Master knows that how important this next few moments are. Really, just positioned all in this area around the Roche, protecting that ward. Is mine. Scanning. Also, S and Y, another item finished up. Ori, so first is that Doom, that status resist. We'll have to watch out for that. I think Mono was going for one as well. Oh, did he actually queue it up? Okay. Oh, he's, I think he's gonna change yeah, it up. Yeah, he was thinking between Lincoln's. the S and Y and the Lincoln side. Okay. Yeah. We did see uh, 33 did have the Ags queued up before. He has shifted. We don't know what he's going to go just yet, but it's probably going to end up being that at some point if we do see those Lincoln start getting queued up. Yeah, especially if I think Monet starts showing like an ultimate orb of perseverance, you can yeah. you can bet that 33 is going to queue up that Ags. Aster, they are going to smoke. It looks like they're going to make the first aggressive move. Let's see what sort of a jump they're able to start the fight with. They showed themselves mid. They nuke out the wave while they were smoked. This could be a good round There's a DD. Hello. Skeeter Another is prepared. One. Two steps into this first. Smoke the spells. They know that they're up here. He Drop down the ward. XXX is going to be looking for the nice jumping. Spear. To catch on to Saxa. Now with the spear, but he's still forced aside. Having to get the leak off Saxa. Saxa, he's away. He's out of the fight. And Baboka, he's having to deal with 33. 33 is going to look to bail out with the BKB TP out. Will actually kill Baboka on the way out there. Back in action. Mone finishes off the kill onto Snake. And he'll come back in with a buyback. They're locked down. Ori, though, he's in so much trouble. Here. Skeeter just doing incredible. Swashbuckle bash over towards Siamese Cat as well. Tundra, they'll take the team fight. And at a very important time as well, Roshan is up. They'll head straight into the pit. They didn't even use Doom. They didn't even need it in the fight. They were able to just reset away. 33 actually jumps the back line, gets on Pavoka, 9 as well. They caused so much havoc. Split the fight up completely, which lets Skeeter just jump in afterwards and pick and choose his target. Yeah, like as they run into this high ground, they think it's like a good jump onto Smirana, but he's very tanky. He drops the Wraith Pack. They pop all their BKBs, but they don't end up killing anyone. And then it's kind of, you know, switch a room where Tundra now, they just run you over. Your BKBs are done. As we can see here, they have a nice jump on the Mirana, but Saxa here, four step leap, Wraith Pack runs away. And now it starts getting like a little weird for them. And they're like, okay, we need to get the hell out of here, but you're not running away from a, a Pango and all these blink daggers. And now, you know, Tundra, they win this fight. They get the Aegis and 13,000 gold lead. Just indeed, that was always going to be a tough fight for Asta to step into. Tundra having a favorable positioning. And indeed, the way that they're able to sort of split it up, the, the supports of Tundra taking so much focus from Mone. Look at Skeeter, he was feeling that moment. He was finally able to like jump into a fight as the CK and get He could do up. something and slay them. <laughs> Huge injection of gold. Everybody kind of having a full item now finished up also. So what the call is from Asta now. What to do with this four minutes? Well, Tundra will be very comfortable with taking a fight. I mean, there's the Axe Doom, so they have to be so careful how they position themselves on Aster, too. Got to be very prepared for this move. Tundra are on the hunt for Aster once again. Got everything ready. Phantasm in 15, but they don't need it. 
Aster have good positioning. They're kind of waiting. Let's see how Thunder approaches. You'll see how it's Skeeter. Long enough for the Crystal Maiden, but there Monet jumps in, but there's the Aghanim's Doom. At 33, all he's got to do is stay on top of Monet, and then Monet, yeah. he's going to have no <laughs> response. Nothing to be done against that, as Monet's out for 80 seconds. And the rest of Aster, they've got to run. Tundra, they're going to try with the chase. Arrow, okay. not going to quite reach towards Ori. He's out of there. And there we have indeed that the power of the Aghanim's Doom. Not much that a poor old Slark can do about that one with 30 trees on top of it. And look at when the Slark respawns and look at the Doom cooldown. This oh, is actually back up before the Slark even respawns. So for Aster, this is starting to look really difficult. They have to try to find these angle of approaches that were working earlier, but Tundra are seeming to cover their bases a lot better. Yeah, now. you're not going to get to abuse this cooldown anymore, at least as long as one of your cores die, which yeah. I think is going to be the case in uh, yeah every fight coming up. So I think unless you you know look to get some four stabs, which uh, Siamese Cat has queued up for now. These fights are not going to be that much easier for you. I, I believe that Aster might just wait out his ages and then they, it's really crunch time to talk about how you want to approach these next fights. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, four stabs or even the, the shard on the on the Marcy. It looks like he has queued it up, so yeah. that could be another option to maybe just toss somebody That's out of good. that Doom area. Yeah, definitely not going to be an easy one, though. Tundra now having... So, everyone's so much tankier now, too. Nine has a full Shiva's Timeless Relic, too. It's hard for them to really find a target to focus fire on Aster. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. You see Dunn. Oh, Skeeter, the big items. Starting to roll in for Dyer's Tundra. Under Starting to feel like maybe some damage issues also coming in for Aster. I mean, especially because, of course, every, one person's always going to get doomed every single time, but everyone on Tundra's starting to get pretty tanky. Albert even on a Marana. Yeah, like we had this earlier where we were like, yeah, Asa prefer long fights, but I feel like at this point now, with all these items coming out, AC, Aura, you have yeah. Shivas on 9, you have Halberts, Wraith Pack, Force Staffs. I'm not even sure if Aster prefer these long fights anymore. I feel like it has shifted a bit where they now need to get a really solid initiation around a place where Tundra cannot buy back, and I'm pretty sure you need to kill these supports first because they're not going to burst through a CK even if they jump in first. So fights are not easy for Aster right now. Definitely need to look for them to clutch one of the next fights out of a smoke. Yeah. So how do you like, focus firing a hero when they're going to be frost shielded, taking 60% reduction? Four staffed, boots the bearing, removed out of the fights too. It's, yeah, like you said, Dyer's have to try to find top. some of these supports to take attack. them out, but yeah, they're not fragile either. It's to be very difficult for Asta to make any sort of move right now. They're just having to let Dundrug. That's the way we're taking these towers. And the waves pushed in. And Maboka just continuing to use the ult farm. Maybe this Hex on XXS that he's working towards is something that they want to perhaps abuse on one of the side lanes, perhaps get a pick off, allow yourself to have more of the stun duration to perhaps burst through heroes. Uh, one of the other timings that perhaps that they have later, Ori has a blink now, so I think they want to have this quick initiation, have him follow up, and later in the game this Refresher will come out. It's been a while since I've seen a Refresher Razor. Of course, we all know that's very strong, and I just don't know if that's gonna be enough for them. It's all gonna be about this clutch jump from them. They just keep getting bigger. I mean, 33 is nearing critical mass. He's got the bots too. He's got. He's nearly out of running out of. Slots. I mean, this guy is <laughs> nearly full slotted. That's yeah. for sure. And he's always going to be able to be at every fight because of those boots of travel too, right? So yeah. they could even look for these fights, the moonlight shadow as well. They're going to be able to sweep the map a lot easier, and kind of just keep Aster trapped inside of the base. Scary moments. I mean, what sort of, sort of is the next step for 33 of all this money? What, is, he, is he going to upgrade the blink? Does he want to swallow the Aghanims, get something else in that slot? Um, probably upgrade his dagger. They already have a Shiva, so you don't really need to go for that. Perhaps upgrade your blink, then you just sell your Midas, you get a refresher, or eat yep. your eggs, get a refresher. Depends on how greedy he wants to be. You know, he might just eat his eggs and get the refresher, keep the Midas, knowing him. Definitely possible. Keeps the bottom wave shoved joins his team immediately, and they just continue to keep Aster trapped in the base. Gold lead is just continuing to grow and grow and grow. That's the Hex. Uh, as you said, okay. this has got to be something something that Aster are able to make a big play with around sort of the reveal. Head-on team fight just doesn't seem possible. I feel like now it's somehow you have to try to maybe look for pickoffs, but 
the way the Tundra is playing, they're only showing the Doom for a quick second on some lane, but everybody else is sticking together. Let's see what they can do with this, with this iron reveal of the Hex from, from XXS. I mean, who's sort of the ideal target? He's just looking to get in and a Hexa, one of the supports, the easier kills, or do you just try for a core? I think if they're at all together on Tundra, you need to go on a sub. If they're split, yeah, then you can try for one of the cores, but if this is a clash like this where you don't know where the enemies are, you're definitely eyeing this Lich and Marana first. Both teams smoked up and opposite sides of the map. And Bates getting hit, attack. so they know that something's up. Yeah. Look at all the lanes from Tundra. And double Siege Wave bottom. We'll have to come back to the base now, Asta. Smoke comes to an end. Not able to catch Tundra off guard right, as they wish to. Tundra might just look to go in with this bottom wave just a little bit. First, if somebody shows, they might just jump. Or he's showing. There's the jump, and they're going to be able to get the uh -oh. pull back into the stun. One is going to get in, able to drop down the shard there to ensure that Ori can have the chance to break away from that jump. Got the, the BKB there as well, though. Mone to try and save his Razor. Nice attempt there from Tundra. Just trying to take advantage of those double catapults being there. They did get 550 damage on the tower because of just that, that jump. Yeah, no, they don't get a kill. It's, it's very good by them. So first of all, they I have the gem. Come. They just want to keep the map narrow. They want to force Aster back to the bottom lane because they knew that Aster were previously smoked in their own jungle, right? Now that you force all of them here, again, you sweep across the map, you take your gem, take out their vision, take back the outpost, and now it's once again soon time to play around the third big boy of the game, which is Mr. Roche. So Tundra with some very quick and swift map movement in this game. Chasing out. Do you have a word to play around? Only one that they do have right now. But the base continues to get siege. They have to address those side lanes. It's so hard for them to step out this stage of the game, Asta. Almost just have to wait until Tundra oh, approaches them, maybe even until Tundra's at least on their half of the map. So. Look, look how hard it is to kill these heroes now, too. An Aeon Disc on nine. They have a Lincolns on the CK, too. So they're covering all their bases. Just to start make the that much harder. They, they know that they don't need to really have any cares in the world when it comes to Aster approaching the Roshan pit. Ori, blink out. He's rolling Thunder down. Tundra, we reset a little bit with that in mind. They'll back off. Won't try and push the Roshan whilst they're lacking one of the ults. Well, they did get the rollout, so not too bad for them. But I, I still think for Aster, as we said, of course, they're far behind, so it's not easy. But buybacks are going to be the name of the game, I think, for them if they want to win this next fight. Try to bait out some spells, come in with the buybacks, get a clutch steal on the Aegis, and then kind of try to, you know, come back into this game. Because they're by no means out of it, but they need to hit all these next plays and timings. Yeah, that feels like it actually just has to be the solution. We've seen that a lot to. from teams in the past. Yeah. yeah, bait the Doom, like maybe just throw Ori's life away at some point, and then let them buy back and jump into the fight afterwards and try to clean up. But have to be careful because soon, as you mentioned, you know, 33, he did buy the overwhelming blink, but he's getting close to having that, uh, that gold for that refresher as well. So could just have the two dooms anyway. Get the 25 as well off this wave. And now it's a break as well, so. Oh boy. Yeah, this Doom is uh, pretty strong, huh? And also, if he ever dies, if he does get, of course, right now... No, he... Okay, he has all the buyback money. So I think for them, for Tundra, it's important to not fight too close around this outpost because they should know that Astro's only win condition are buybacks with a TP back in. And 3-3, if he feels very strong, he can go in first. If he trades his life, he can buyback bots TP to on just one of his teammates and come back to the fight as well to try and nullify some of these plays from Astro. They can easily do this roast like this. Full HP, yeah. and 9. See if I still want to take the risk. They have to scout it. It's just so, so dangerous. But at this stage, with the amount they are behind, Asta, they've got to make a risky move. They want to have a chance of turning this game round. Hi. Playing into an Aegis Cheese and Ags at this deficit feels pretty much impossible. Looks like they really want to try to take the fight. I like what Tundra are doing. They just kind of stopped and wait. The, the Doom. 33 is in. The Aoi Doom is there. He's going to look to chase down the Boca. But Boca was able to get the BKB off. And they do manage to ensure that Monik can break away from 33. <laughs> Still, though, they've lost the two other cores, XXS and Ori. And now Siamese Cat as well, short to follow. So they were trying their best to approach Tundra from some sort of surprising angle, but the wards were down, vision was set up, and Tundra once again able to get that jump in.
a little bit of a silver lining there that they could get Monet out to safety, but three heroes still go down. Roshan still goes the way of Tundra. Asta, they fall further behind. They get the chain stun. The stun catches on the Razor. They get the arrow. I mean, even from then, anywhere before that, it looked like the fight was probably just going to be over. They spent their gold, too. He bought the full refresher before yeah. the fight on the Razor, so that was them going, all right, this is kind of our last chance of a fight. We can't actually win around these buybacks, and it doesn't actually work out at all. That is the push. DD Rune as well here for Skeeter. To speed up the siege. What can they do about this Asta? Doesn't look like they've got a hole. They need to delay. Many options left here. They're down 35,000 gold. Tundra onto the barracks, forcing out the fortification. And look to play it calm as well. They won't immediately push for a second set of racks. They know that they're in a spot that's very, very comfortable right now. They can definitely look to take the, the safest route out of this game. Yeah, I mean, the uh, half of Tundra's gold lead is currently in their bank <laughs> with 3-3 uh, three, three holding 8,000, 9 holding 3, and the rest of them also holding like 3 each. So 20k is definitely in the inventory right now. They're going to chill a moment, think about the next item, spend their gold if they want to. And then, yeah, I mean, Aster, they will look for one of their last fights, again, where they need to go around as they did before. It's hard, but this is the only way that they can win this game. If they just wait in their base, Tundra will bleed them out until the end of the game and just slowly finish. I wonder if we can see the win probability because I imagine it's, it's getting probably down to one of those 1% ones at this stage. It does feel like that. 98. Close. Oh. Oh, that's a, I, it's a more than I thought. It's a generous 4%, I yeah. would say. Let's have a look, see if, see if Asta can find that 4%. 33. Pretty much has the gold for that refresher plus buyback in a second. And they're already starting the siege. The jump skeeter. They get this time straight away for Ori. Ori's gonna get thrown out to the side by Baboka. Baboka will tank the arrow. Uh oh. And for, for that, he may lose his life. No. Okay, Mone. Could you save the depth shroud? Ensures that Baboka will also be saved. Asta, they keep one another alive. So scary for Aster. It's like anybody who shows, and anybody could just die if they show their face that they get caught by those stuns. But Boca sitting way far back Dyer's to be able to make sure that he can try to rebound his his teammates. But they just don't have to continue watching. Now, who do you jump? Who do you start the fight on if you're Aster? You really feel like you've run out of options at this stage. And there's the Dyer's there's that refresher Dyer's finished up for 33. They're gonna try. Spear back. With the jump, 33 will respond with the Axe Aoe Doom in on top of XXS. That'll be the Mars going down. Has got buyback available. Moves over now towards Mane, but Mane was able to put the BKB in time. Keeps his distance. Chain Frost thrown out. Skeeter pops the oh Phantasm. God. Mane has to bounce back under the safety of his tier fours as Ori will go down. No buyback available for him. The Axe Phantasm. Now, just with the, the four members of Asta, is there anything they can do to slow this down? The tier fours falling. 33 still has the refresher. Here he comes. He's able to catch Mone, Mone. Oh my goodness, he is actually able to jump out in time. But 33 students back up in on top of XXS. GG is called as Tundra will take this game one. Seemed like there was a small window where Aster was trying to, starting to bring things back together. But Tundra, they just played really patient. Yeah, I think like this mid game timing really from them, Aster had to get kind of more done really in this timing with their BKBs where they were winning like one or two fights here and there but Tundra they just really they held it together and then they just strike like one fight one and the whole game crumbled from there. Yeah, he was just... having a pretty sad time right Tundra they really had it out from in the lanes he was not having fun as the slot last game. Should be able to have a better time but that being said also Tundra is a team that we said that we're, they're gonna come with mangoes we're gonna click on their heroes yeah. we're gonna look how many mangoes are gonna be set there to prep for that early aggression so we shall see. It's definitely the type of lane where SF should be able to hold this ground for quite a while. I would say the first time it really swings is when you're either scared of Tundra coming to your lane or they really do show up at your lane and then the SF kind of has to rotate around. So I think the, the segment at five to eight minute mark is very important. If you want the SF to hold the bottom area, Ori in the mid lane, he needs to be ready. But in order for him to be ready and be topped up with resources, maybe a rune, they need to help him as as well around this you know, timing of the game to then make it easier for him to help in the play after that. All right, well, let's find out how this one goes down. Game two here, ladies and gentlemen, between Asta and Tundra after what was a 
very impressive looking game one from Tundra in regards to the way they closed it up and just managed to get the game to a point where Asta seemed completely helpless, falling further and further behind in terms of goal and control. We'll get this game off quick to, to a very quick start already. Asta hitting out with the smoke. Let me see if they can set up for some early action as was found in the beginning of game one. All right, let's look at the mangoes. What do we got going on? Nothing too crazy. I mean, the craziest one is really Skeeter having the three mangoes, but this has been something they've done almost every single time on him. Yeah. Always starting with that. And yeah, you know, this Dawn pick, we keep mentioning, I actually think this is really cool because, as we said so much, this SF, he can really struggle versus all this high burst. So, yeah, really looking forward to see what XXS is going to be able to bring to the table on this. I've also seen a few different item builds on this hero, like uh, perhaps it was Saberlight in the group stage who went for like some Wraith Pack build, which is very nice. Like, you see a lot of these range carries come back into the meta. Yeah, they're all very good, but they all abuse Wraith Pack to like yeah. oblivion. The minus damage coming out, the lifesteal, the bonus damage for yourself. So I could definitely see like a shift of item build here for uh, XXS for him to just play around his cores and kind of match this aura building from 3-3 in this game. Yeah, we see uh, Sacred was one of the ones that was also mm -hmm. doing it a lot. Most of the games that he played it, Falcon Blade almost directly into that Wraith Pack so they can join yeah. in and kind of prevent all that damage. So yeah, could be a cool one. Could be a lot of lifesteal that's coming out for this Shadow Fiend, right? Between the Marcy and if he does go for that build. So. Let's see if they want to try and take a risk around this bounty rune. Tommy's Cat and Ori, they were thinking about it, but four heroes around from Tundra. So. I still won't try and force anything there. See with the lane set up, so bottom lane. I mean, as I said, this is a million times better for Mone in comparison to to what he had to deal with in game one's lane. Yeah, and he's got Baboka, he's got Marcy with the SF. This is kind of one of the strongest safe lanes that you can position yourself with. So let's see how 33 and Sox are going to be able to do with this one. Are they going to? Is this a lane? I always wonder. Is this a lane where Tundra is going to straight up fight in it, or are they going to just pull randomly? Because Tundra is so difficult to predict when they're just going to go for these pulls and when they're just going to go for the battle on the lane. Yeah. So I think this is one of the harder lanes that they should be facing. Yeah. You have Sox are currently taking tree grab. Perhaps he wants to get a couple of denies. But I think this is a lane that you want to split a little bit until Tiny perhaps gets like level two, three, and then you can look for like small engagements. But overall, Asset they should look to dominate this lane very heavily in like the first two to three minutes, raises, Marcy jumping in. Maybe we even have to watch for the level two timing in this bottom lane. Yeah. It is so crazy, really, that repositioning for Shadow Fiend, just allowing you to get pretty much triple raises every single time when you get that level two on Marcy. Has to dispose level one, so maybe can go for it here. And they're gonna start stacking them up onto Saxer. He's gonna opt for the TP out. Indeed, that will keep him safe. Not quite able to get the, the distance there to set up another raise. And even if so, probably wouldn't have been enough with the third level one one. You see how much that slow is immediately. When they get hit by the second raise, you have to just go for the TP out. Smart play from Soxa. But anyone who gets grabbed from it is under pressure. It's almost level two already on Baboka. So, I mean, this is probably the lane that we want to be looking at mostly. It's the highest kill threats. Yeah, this next free bottom is your level two. Cool. Simone trying to get the distance so he can get another raise in. And indeed, with the level two hit, Baboka able to jump across with the rebound and set up to take Saxa down. And of course, that will be a tiny out of the lane and without TP. So for a little bit of time, a couple of waves, 33 will be left on his own. Are they bringing more mana regen down here, though, on the side of the Aster? That's the one thing I'm looking at. The, the Bassies are coming from Monet, yeah. so... He should be covered to be able to spam those raises over and over again. I mean, so they, they keep looking for it. They definitely just want to keep on playing this way. This is perfect for them, especially now. Tiny, you know, Saxo is out of the lane for a bit. 3-3 three, three is perhaps not too unhappy as the lane is in an okay position for him. But yeah, Aster, they really want to keep the ball going in this lane and just continue to go off of this. So the Bassi on Monet, great for him, great for his lane partner, and they'll just keep up the pressure. And they actually get a full pull off, a stacked pull. So the whole wave is going to get denied. It's going to get pulled back closer to his tower. Monet is going to have an excellent time in this laning phase. Looking at mid, Storm versus that Zeus, or he should be able to have very good time in this matchup. And top, Dawn as well. So all three lanes for Aster does look like they should have a very good start to be able to even put apply a decent amount of pressure to Skeeter. Has to be quite careful versus the burst of these two. And I think especially with the lanes going this way, you know, if the trajectory stays the same, I really want Aster to look at this mid lane later around like the five minute mark, especially if your lanes do go this well, your Ori. supports are a little more freed up mid lane. Might be able to almost get nine here. I think he might just be able to the fairy fire. You can nine a bit of safety. Deep the bottle charges as well. It's, it's enough to keep him safe, but I think very close there in the mid. He got grabbed actually with like three or four creeps on him. He almost got stuck between them. Excellent vortex by Ori. 
Might go for it again. Yeah. Gonna try to go for more damage here. And he's just putting a lot of pressure onto nine. Yeah, I'd like to see, like you're mentioning, I want to see Baboka go mid. This is an easy kill onto the Zeus for the Marcy. He's making his way over. Yeah. This is already like a very nice play. They're stealing the bounty rune. They're kind of playing around this HP and mana level of nine right now because Ori had this great little play. Oh, they're, they're, they're gonna look to dive this for sure. Now with the rebound, Vortex pull back onto nine. A TP comes in for Zexor. It's a two-man avalanche. Should be able to get some trade from this as Baboka will fall. We oh, might be able to actually go for pushing Ori away from the rune as well too. Let's see if Soxa does do that. He's debating it. Let's actually step away. I thought he was gonna go with the creep wave if he saw how little mana and Ori was having, but he wasn't able to deny away that rune. Top water rune though, should be able to get grabbed from the Zeus. Excellent move though. Baboka seeing the opportunity because he did it, as we mentioned, you know, he got that pull down bottom, so it yeah. resets the lane positioning for Monet, which allows him to go for this type of move mid so freely. Snake he's gotta be a bit careful, top. He's getting very low here. We'll see Scatter Blast back online in a couple of seconds. Ooh. Sami's cat, he's, he's looking for a target here with a shotgun. On Skeeter. Oh, the hammer. Just Slightly. too low range. Not quite able to reach him there. Falcon Blade already done up top, so he's gonna be able to continue that spam. Also, tons of mangoes, both sides. Sami do see Aster also matching. Yeah, all these lanes going Aster's way right now, which is gonna make it easier for them to continue the pressure. And as long as they, you know, hit their early game moves, especially with Boboka, we're gonna have to keep our eyes on him. They wanna, like, pressure around. This lane's some more pressure. I think once Ori does hit this level 6 mark and the 6-minute rune, that's gonna be the first, like, real objective of this game. He's actually, he's gonna hit the 6, it looks like, just before 9 is able to also. So might just be able to go for the straight dive. On lane, Bottom getting aggressive. Under attack. Not at a point where they can quite threaten Mono completely, though. It's a strong timing for 33. As soon as you get level four, this is one of those like peak laning timings for for the Broodmother. You can constantly apply pressure. You're so fast. You have great regen. Yeah, this is also where you know the item builds that they kind of I would say brought into the game, where you start with the magic wand early on. You now have 18 chargers. It's yep. gonna make it a lot easier to man fight and maybe turn it around because you have 18 chargers right now against the Shadow Fiend. But here, both teams are gonna put their eyes on mid. Both teams know this is crucial. Zeus ult is available too, so I have to watch for those side lanes. The SF Monet does have to be careful how low he sits. What is it gonna be? It's bottom. A great rune for Ori too. It would have been an excellent rune for Naim to perhaps be able to disengage from a Storm Spirit, but yeah. See bottom. Aster, very much trying to set up in case 33 steps up too much. Monet hitting the level 5. I like this from XXS. He had the Falcon Blade done, and he's like, this is not enough mana. Buys the Soul Ring as well on the Dawnbreaker. Just continue to be able to slow down Skeeter's farm and just continue spamming them out. I like it a lot. Yeah, like right now, if you can keep this, what they're doing, it's very good. Like if your silence can stay on high HP, keep pressuring, then Zeus doesn't really have a play to use his ult aggressively, which is definitely what he wants. Whereas Aster, if XXS gets to stay in this lane, punish and pressure Skeeter until he gets his ulti, he can pressure the lane, but then also join his team and also go back top after. So I really like the fact that he's double downing on his mana region to keep the pressure up in his lane. We'll see it. The hate stream Ori. Looks to try and set up for the play on a 33, but a quick avalanche will stop Monet from being able to be in position to line up any raises. 33 easily able to step back underneath the tower. Saxa, he'll go for a TP out. They've got nothing to stop it. Tundra able to make sure that that rotation from Ori amounts to nothing. Ori wanted the bigger kill. He could have probably just gone and settled for the tiny with the yeah. initial jump, but he wants to go for the brood. Can't blame him. Yeah, he has, he has a haste rune, right? He feels strong. He feels like they're going to hit this out, but Tundra, 3-3 three, three here with some I, nice jukes. And I like this too. Ori, as soon as he makes the move, uh, Sami's cat comes mid, it takes the XP because he's giving Dawn that solo XP top. So his level six for Dawn is about to come out. So if they do make an aggressive play, as you mentioned before, it's going to be brought in with the Solar Guardian. Yeah, I would really like them to execute this play on the mid lane, like with the Zeus or maybe the rune. Like if Zeus comes to contest this, yeah, you, you go, you kill that guy. If not, you get a free rune for Storm, and then once again, Ori can look for what he wants to do. Instead of fishing a bit for XXS top. He's tanky. And we get the toss back over to Skeeter. 
So TP's coming in in return from Asta. See if they can save XXS. And oh, nice setup there. But Boca provides the life steal and XXS with the Starbreaker pretty much heals right back up. And now he's ready to turn. Mid -lane. Takes out Saxa. He's going to get back to safety. And at the same time, the fourth takes Ooh. into the cookie. Asta will find nine as well. Oh, this early game is really perfect for them. The lane setups, the way that they're moving and distributing the wealth to and experience. Even now, after that kill, a regen rune spawns bottom. Everything is going Aster's way this early game. Yeah, this is some very high-level Dota coming out from them. You know, just using the right amount of heroes in the perfect places. You only send your Marcy top. He sidekicks your Dawnbreaker. He turns it around, gets the life. In the meantime, Storm and Snapfire, they play together. That's all you need to kill the Zeus. And now they're waiting for nine on this respawn right now. So I want to see how Tundra kind of help him get back around this area because Aster, they have three heroes here with a Solar Guardian at the ready. Full mana Storm too. You can feel from Tundra as well, they're staying right away from this tier one tower, or at least being very careful in how they approach the defense. Their two side laners aren't really heroes that want to be like, hey, they're diving mid, let's just rotate like a Slark or a Bruden. That's not what they want to do whatsoever. Yeah. Bruden, Slark, very independent heroes that they want to stay in their side lanes as long as possible. So a great move for Mast to really kind of punish that, that they know those two heroes are just not going to make the rotation mid. And if they do, it's extremely awkward for Tundra. Yeah, I do like how Tundra are playing around this. It's currently like, uh, this is something what I like to call a ticking time bomb. Yeah, you do have the Aster heroes in the mid lane, but as long as you do this kind of very calm, you don't lose heroes or your tower, this is allowing 3-3 to end up taking this bottom tower because no one really wants to be here. I do think there is a world where you can put a hero here because you have the Dawn ult, but they're just deciding to, you know, more so play around the mid and top half, get the active runes and play around your storm. Let's see. Maybe if Tundra they're looking. want to respond this time to, to this mid play, because again, Asta, they're looking to, to set up here. Attack. Already, Siamese Cat coming in from the side. Oh, that's a good curry kill. Snaking a big one. That's the Fairy Trinket and the finished Kaya, so actually a big deal that he gets that snipe from Mori. Or not the finished Kaya, sorry, but the recipe at the least. But the Fairy Trinket he does take away. Bottom okay, so Monet, uh, similar to the last game, right? He doesn't feel comfortable in the bottom lane. He's yep. gonna go mid this time around, but this time it's not only to sap XP, but rather to help with this tower. I don't see Tundra defending this no. tower. If you fight into this, there's a Donald coming. They should just be happy with, you know, Slark and Brute kind of going back up in the network, but for Aster, completely different story. You want to keep pressuring up on the map and lower the map for Tundra here. Yeah, and for Tundra, like their lineup overall, as for when it comes to straight up team fights, it's pretty non-existent. Yeah. Like, they're actually just very lane and then pick off oriented Aster, they have overwhelming team fight. Like four of their heroes really bring it so much to the Gaia's table. So for these next few moments, it does feel like Tundra is going to have to just chill out, not overcommit to anything, and be careful from all the moves from Aster. And do you think, you know, considering Tundra's lineup, is that something they can afford to do? This this is sort of a, a draft that, you know, is able to sort of recover from a, a sort of early game deficit if they do start to lose a bit of map control? I would say it's definitely difficult because there's so much pickoff for Master. The Storm can catch people on the side lanes with a Dawnbreaker ult. They can set up pretty easy for yeah. Aster to catch pretty much anything. Radiant so for Tundra, the next few minutes is really difficult. Just avoid fights, try to get your wealth back so you can try to find something, try to find somewhere to go. Yeah, I was, if Tundra are only down like 4k gold at 15 minutes, then they're going to be playing the next few minutes very well because as it currently stands, I think Aster, they have answers for everything. They do put the Dawnbreaker bottom now, which means one of the next plays for them is likely to pressure this top lane, kick the Slark out. You should not allow Skeeter to play in this area for all too long. XXS can always connect while he's free farming the bottom lane. And yeah, Aster shouldn't really be scared of much because Tundra don't, they can't really do all that much right now. Their damage is a little bit lacking. Their cores, they, they need to keep farming. Yeah, the Brood and the Slark, just, these heroes just do not want to get involved until they feel like that big timing does come in. So have to try to rally around nine somehow. Looks like Snaking and Soxa trying to make some type of play. Just feels so difficult. They just doesn't feel like they're gonna have the damage for anybody they go on because it's just gonna get received by a solar yeah. guardian instantly. So if you're if you're Tundra, I believe that you wanna kind of wait. Maybe you can. I see. It. All right. Just gonna try and start something over towards Saxon, but the moonlight shadows out and Tundra and managed to disengage. I asked her just running as a unit. I think they really just know there's no way Tundra's ever gonna walk into this straight 5v5 or you know 4v5 and then a solar guardian coming in. It's Smart choice is just taking out these towers, so Tundra, they're just farming, right? Just, yeah, no way that you're going to look for the fight, so everyone just farm a camp, arrow some camps, etc. 
deck. I think for Tundra, what you want to wait for is at least the Diffusal on Skeeter, your yep. Pipe on 3-3. You're getting somewhat close to them, so yeah, if Astro do overstep, you can perhaps somewhat look to take a fight as Ori, fishing for more. Yeah, Ori's gonna try and chase up towards the high ground. He's getting a little low on mana. Skeeter's able to put the Shadow Dance in time. Look to escape from Bavokan with the it's available, it'll get a little bit away. Not quite able to get down to the low ground, but it'll be fine nonetheless. They don't quite have the vision on him, so Skeeter will escape. Okay, so now that Astro have taken over the top tier one and the top jungle, I would like to see them smoke with uh, three of the heroes, Storm, Snap, Marcy, a kind of a killing duel, especially now that your map looks nice, your SF is kind of safe. I would like them to go away from here real quick, look for a smoke into the enemy triangle or to the brood, get a quick kill with the Donald and then migrate back to top, because I do think, yeah, Astro are playing very well, but Tundra are also getting away with, you know, quite a bit at this point. Yeah, I mean, Slark is not too far behind, of course. I mean, he's 5,800, 5, sure, Shadow Fiend is 7,300, but that's expected from an SF safe lane, so. I do think or Aster making the right move so far, but could still look to make a little bit more happen because of that advantage that they do have right now. For sure, because right now it's not that easy to take the top tier two. You probably don't want to force the Roshan just yet. You maybe want a little bit more network. So instead, if you can't force objectives straight up, you want to go look for a play, especially if you do feel strong. So here we do have the smoke up from them as nine. He's clearing, uh, what is that, quad ancients? That's a big stack, yeah, at life. least a quad. And, and they are making it. They are making the move, but I like that they're not overcommitting the move. I actually like that they're keeping the Marcy top because they always have that follow-up of the Solar Guardian that can come in. So making sure they do distribute yeah. as much to maximize. See here, now look to go for 33. Look at the setup, he has got the pipe and a decent amount of one charges. He was able to get both of them off, but they have enough damage to fight through it. They take down 33. Tundra, they'll have the chance to get a trade here as the arrow connects in onto Siamese Cat. Tundra, they'll take down one in return and Ori. That's the ball lining out of this one. It's Tundra pretty much got the, the three of them chasing Aster down. I think that's just perfect though for Aster. I think they, that they're perfectly fine with losing the snap fire. It's, you know, they make the three rotations happen bottom. They still get the kill. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if maybe you can get out cleanly if you just snap all from the get-go instead of cooking in. But either yeah. way, you know, the idea of the play, the execution is pretty good. You trade your support for a core and a lot of TP. So again, you force Tundra around the map. Aster definitely happy with that. XXS almost, he pretty much has Wraith Pack done also, so already feeling like yeah. lack of being able to team fight for Tundra. When this comes in, no way they're going to be able to really team fight. They do also have at least a way to kind of kill it. The spiders, right, can come in and clear that Wraith Pack out like Aster has the way to kill it later on with that Marcy. Yeah, and I think now that, you know, the game has progressed a couple minutes, you can soon look to potentially uh, then force the Roshan on Aster. It won't yep. take as long. You have the Wraith Pack, you have higher levels. You have uh, the passive on your Shadow Fiend, you have Psychic and Marcy ult, so soon that's going to be one of their next goals around the Roche area, then top tier 2. And in the meantime, your Storm and your Snap, they will always look to play aggressive with the ultimate of XXS to back them up. Yeah, absolutely. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Still, just that 3k lead that they've had for a bit of time here, Asta. Has 9 been able to get a single power rune? I don't rune? think so. I don't think, alright. No. Skeeter. And Tundra, they're heading over here. They're actually running Avalanche set up on Ori. Ori, oh! All lining just in time to, to dodge that arrow, but that's a, pretty much as close as it gets. Mac over to the bottom of the, the jungle. Siamese Cat gets found. Tundra. Oh, TP's to top. And getting aggressive here, and indeed Asta, they, they've got to be prepared for these very, very quick moves across the map from Tundra. Mone backing off. Skeeter, if he's able to close the gap, has got that Diffusal Blade. Looks like they won't try and chase blindly into that area of the map here, Tundra. They'll, they'll be careful, and Asta will be allowed to back away. Yeah, very much seeing it, just a, sort of a quick move, quick play like that. So neither the 3k lead goes down to the 2k. If they get that kill, it would have been completely shifted down, yeah. too, because yes. they would have had more space on the map, too, for like 40 seconds where the storm is not alive. I mean, it's, it's definitely got to be a bit scary for Asta that this game has sort of fallen into this position, right? They're, they're going to feel the pressure to, to, to get something done, and as you keep saying, you know, have that chance to make a move that allows you to really just take advantage of the strengths that the backup of a Dawnbreaker could provide on the on these sort of plays you're attempting. So they are smoking up again. They're very likely looking for this one kill into Roche. Ori is going to look to go in. They'll get the grab up to 33. Coming over with the Solar Guardian, and the Kiss is coming in as well. 33 falling low. They'll take him out of the start okay, break. In fact, XXS is able to get the two-man stun off the back of that last swing of the hammer. Skeeter has to put the Shadow Dance to run, but Boca charges in a beats down snaking. Asta, that's the sort of moves they're looking to make. Yeah, they're just forcing the fights, forcing Tundra to react to them and be like, okay, good luck. Bring on the fight to us. We know you can't take it. And now into that Roche, they've got that sustain coming in from the sidekick too. 
Tundra not going to be able to contest this one. No, there's just going to be a free agents here for Monet. So again, uh, you know, looking at the follow plays, you likely for them, they want to push out their lanes. But I don't want them to really slow down the game because we have this Aegis and run down the top lane as five. I would like to, once they get close to their ults again, yeah, start pushing top with your Shadow Fiend. But once again, look for the smoke across the map and keep shutting down the map of Tundra. Don't, you know, split the map and go even when you're so much stronger than them. Shut down the map of Tundra. Yeah, they should just dominate the map. The Storm has DD again. I mean, every, I, literally every single, right? Yeah. Every single power rune, I'm pretty sure, has gone to the side of either Aster or Ori, except for one that I think I get denied from, like, snaking, so playing excellent across the map, but just want to see them keep applying that pressure. Don't give the space. Don't let Tundra try to breathe back into this game. And I do see that, you know, Ori and Siamese Cat constantly paired together, looking for some type of aggression. The DD inside that bottle. Tundra, though, they do have to blink now. Soxa, he's finished it. I'm going to try and see if they can take the Aegis out of the hands of Ori. Quick toss combo. That'll do it. Has the Aegis gone? They have the tools to try and go for a second attempt at it. Lining Bolt, but no further abilities available at that moment to lock him down. So Ori will manage to escape, but a very quick loss of the Aegis. That could have actually been another death if the Pounce was saved, actually. Skeeter actually using it after he'd already died. I mean, Tundra right now, they're making a lot of, like, very good small plays. Like, we yeah. saw them earlier get this one, two kills there. Skeeter instantly TP's top and then, like, cleans the jungle with his Shadow Dance. Even here now, like, they're, even though they're behind and they know it's not so easy, they're always aware for, like, these little plays. And, you know, they punish uh, Ori here in the mid lane, quickly take out the Aegis. But now Answer, they're like, okay, you know, they shot all the Hero Smith. Let's go top, take this tier two and try to keep the ball rolling. Dyer's top tower Look at XXS. I mean, he knows how careful he has to be really on the map so important they're gonna be hunting for him constantly so always kind of sitting back we're gonna clear some spiders and he'll get all of them tundra Radiant making sure to not allow any of themselves to, to be caught within their own jungle i mean you see the yeah, the amount of war control that yeah, still looking to slam down around this area. We've got six sentries up here. Looks like they are pinging bottom. Sox, as we mentioned, does have the blink. Usually the target that you want to go for is that Dawnbreaker, but there is a snap on, at the ready down there behind him. Both teams are being very good at like not giving away too many freebies and like you know protecting themselves very nicely. And if you're asked to, yeah, this is a 5k gold lead, but Tundra always have the option of like really clutching you out, right? They have this tiny combo into a potential arrow. Mid lane. It's mid. Quick setup, and that's the combo you're yep. talking about. Yep. Anybody that steps out alone in the mid lane, bottom, very quickly dies. Skeet up. We'll get out of a dark packed off pounce in a second. And it's going to be soon enough to break far enough away from the kisses, so he'll be fine. Okay, Tundra is forcing some mistakes from Aster here so far. I mean, has the blink up. He's seen if he can close in on this. Toss back. Close the gap onto XXS. Gets the toss back. Corey will jump over towards Saxa. And Saxa's got back up. Nine Skeeter and Snaking move forward. Saxa does go down. And he may have just set up for Tundra to be able to get the kill in return. Skeeter's trying to chase on. Third arrow hits. Wrap around for the sideline. I connect the arrow, but still hard for Tundra to move in. They still don't have Shadow Dance back up on Skeeter, so he cannot full commit for the fight. Has to respect still how strong the cores are of Aston Monet. Of course, very ready to fight with the BKB done. Tundra, they'll hold back. They tried to push on and catch something with Saxa. They couldn't quite find the opportunity. Asta this time prepared. Nice attempt with the toss back, but XXS still far too tanky. I mean, 2300 HP, Dragon Scale as well. And you have to be careful a lot of times versus Dawn if you don't kill him right away. But Boca comes in, gets that side kill. He's going to full heal off of one Starbreaker. Yeah, like he already heals a lot on his own right with his passive. He has the Wraith Pact if Boca can come in. One thing for Asa, they need to be more careful around this middle lane. It's currently one of the more dangerous areas of the map, especially they're constantly pushing the silence on Tundra, so you force Asa to respond, and that's where Tundra really strike. 6k gold lead for Asa. Sex a little bit away. Let me get the clothes on to Siamese Cat. Yeah. Every time someone shows mid, just like you said. Yeah. And they're going to smoke right away off that kill. They're, they're good to go again. I mean, Ski just got the acronyms done. Shadow Dance is back up. Time drive, they're ready to immediately look for more. They've got excellent pick off and burst that we've seen multiple times now. It's going to be Mocha. Well, managed to rebound away. And now under the tier two, it's a bit trickier of a situa situation for Tundra to commit for. Still might try and do it, though. The arcane rune is thinking about it. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Tundra, even though they have that, you know, that 6k deficit, still looking to be the aggressors. 
Nine currently working on this axe. So again, uh, Skeeter, he got to finish his, so allows him to poke a bit more in the fight, be more free. The same with uh, Skeeter here, uh, with Nine getting his axe. Their burst is going to be even stronger than yep. before. So Aster, they really need to be very careful. We already see Tundra. They're behind in the game, and they're still making a lot of very clutch moves here around the map. I like the itemization from Siamese Cat. I really like what he's doing here on the Snapfire. He's got Mech queuing up the pipe afterwards, yeah. just going for any type of extra healing that they can do to sustain through this burst. You know, they know that Monet, he has the BKB, so he is safe, but has to be able to get it off in most situations. Let's see if they can burst through 33. Should be able to. And they're coming in with the Solo Guardian back up as well. The four of them having no trouble taking out the Spider alone. And now, the way moving in on the mid. Maybe able to try and look for some pressure onto the tier two. They've got this 40 second window where they don't have to worry about 33 putting any pressure on himself elsewhere. The bulk even pops the ult preemptively to be able to push this tower even faster. Drops in just a few seconds. Level 15 was hit on the Shadow Fiend right before this fight. 16, in fact. The tower dropped in seconds. I mean, once again, Boboka having a you know pretty good game on his Marcy. He's yep. gonna have a BKB again in like what maybe two to three minutes time if he doesn't receive another death. Yep, this middle area for now. So. And we, great. we definitely oh. have seen these uh, Marcy's versus like the Zeus, right? If he gets on top of him, he's gonna yeah. be able to solo kill him in a lot of situations. And definitely has a lot of different elements to be able to jump onto him because he's got that long range rebound. He has the storm who's gonna be jumping and finding him anyway. So Reg on Monet as well. Shadow Fiend. Massive. Indeed, you know, having rather a different game this time around. Game two here compared to game one, Monet. Dyer, Much I'll more scan. in his element and he's been allowed to flourish as the SF this game. Shadow. He's been able to sit back and farm because of all the space he's gotten from his team. Tundra. For a move. Skeeter leading the way. The Thunder Gods are to scout things out, immediately trying to get as far away from this potential movement as possible, Asta. There was a random static remnant from Ori that actually hit the Slark, so they know where they are. Still, Still get the jump move. in onto Siamese Cap. Ori zipping back over towards him. He's thinking about trying to take something in return. He's going to jump over towards Saxa. Take like a burst through this, but Boca commits it as well with the up. But Skeeter just turns with the pounce, but Boca's going to get taken down. Asta, they'll use the bite back on Siamese Cat. They want to try and take this fight, but it doesn't look easy to do. As Tundra, Radiant's still incredibly down. strong, can Asta really try and turn a fight back into this? They're going to try. They go with the zip forward there. Combo oh. down Skinner. An immediate grab there from Ori as they take him pretty much down 100 to 0. He is out of Mariner, though, and the arrow connects in return. He'll lose his life for that one, Ori. Tundra, they're looking to go back in. The BKB is popped from XXS. I mean, Saxon's going to have another jump probably in a second. They get the Nimbus drop down onto XXS. Jump over oh. Saxon. Not quite able to find the toss back, though. Still has Avalanche at the ready. It's so now onto Siamese Cat. Tundra, they're still trying to, to push on and get some sort of connection onto the rest of Asta. They know that no Ori up and available for 30 seconds. They do have a lot of ways to just disengage and reset, as we see there from Tundra. Four step on the Tiny, leaps, of course, from the Mirana, the jumps from the Zeus, the Brood being able to just skitter through the tree line. So definitely a bit difficult for Asta. And we did see also the Wraith Pact was dropped and actually hidden kind of in the tree line there from 33. So a little bit of that damage that maybe Aster thought they had initially was not quite there. Yeah, with this like pipe and Wraith Pact, right? We've talked about this all tournament with the damage mitigation. Tundra are definitely, they're playing in a way where they're forcing Aster to make some mistakes. This yeah. is not how Aster wants to take fights here. They clutch it out though with Skeeter, right? They do get to fully end up killing him. But for the coming fights, it's what Aster want is to have this clear initiation with Storm and then drop all the spells like that. You don't want Tundra to run into you and it's like, oh, do I use my Donald here? Do I need to BKB? You know, like this uncertainty. You want to make it very clear. And as for Tundra, they want to do this exact same thing again and make it uncertain for Aster of how to fight. They were even perhaps looking for Monet there for a second. They saw him on the high ground with that ward sentry. Just under a minute now until Roshan's back up and both teams know it. They want to fight around this area. Jump off from Zaxxer, he's able to get the toss back onto Siamese Cat. They burst through the snap fight. Ori jumps up to the high ground, but he's pretty low on the mana. Will opt to keep his distance for now, and XXS sort of left on the front. He's going to go for the TP out with the remainder of his BKB. The rest of Aster, though, they're getting chased out by 33. Skeeter okay. closes the gap, pounces in onto Boboka Tundra. They'll be able to take a second kill. I mean, they're, they're playing the fight so well. These tossbacks, these ways to reposition, and then, as you said, they all have a different yeah. way to disengage. And then the Wraith Pack gets put down. Aster tries to commit into it, and they're like, oh my god, wait a minute, we have no mana left on Storm. We have to full TP out and disengage. Tundra. 
Sumbo, even though they're at, what, a 6k deficit, have now brought it down to two. They're making it happen. They're using their heroes so well, it's really beautiful to watch. You have Slark in the front, giving all this night vision. You have Saxa, he goes in, gets the toss back, Avalanche, four stabs himself back out. And now, if you're Monet on this s you don't want to run into a fight for five seconds. He can grab onto Skeeter, but Skeeter was able to get the dark packed off in time. Into the Shadow Dance, bounce as well. He breaks away from the combo. They that's, try to catch him off guard with. That's two massive ults on cooldown. The, I think that's maybe even the first Requiem that I saw of the game when he's level 18 and the Solar Guardian. So Tundra. Skeeter's back up into this area. They're going to try and make a play here. They get the Toss back on towards the store. They drop down underneath oh, the pound. Sorry's out. I mean, Tundra just have completely claimed the lead of this game. And uh, second Roche is up. That's going to be the next objective in the game. They do have some stacks on Skeeter. I mean, Monet stepping up there. For more. It's actually Skeeter. They're, they're ready and waiting. Monet has to put the BKB and run. But now it's a BKB also to disengage. I mean, Tundra just forcing so much out of Aster. Roche does respawn. And I think some. Spiders will probably go scout that out in a second there for Tundra. I mean, this has got to be scary for Aster, right? They, they've got to be feeling right now how they're sort of losing control of the game. That the lead they had early on, it was, it was definitely something they would have felt that, that was under their control. And now at this point, the last few moves, Tundra outplaying them. I mean, Aster, how do they sort of turn this one back around? They're, they're losing control of the game. Tundra's going to be able to get this Roshan and Aegis, and Aster just not in any sort of position at all to contest this. Yeah, they, they just cannot stop this Rosh. What's they need? You have this top net worth SF. You need to set them up for success. I feel like currently you are not doing that. Tundra, they're they're styling on you. They get a clutch kill. They disengage and they keep following you. Like look at all the spells: double pounce, double four step. Your first initiation needs to come out from your side on Aster. It's Ori who has to do it almost every single time, though, right? So for Ori, it is, it's complicated. I think Boboka might have to just start sacrificing himself a little bit more yeah. to allow the Shadow Fiend to get this window to walk in so Ori can actually follow up, because Ori, no BK. Oh, he comes Skeeter. Same area that he's ready to just charge straight into to start a fight against Aster. We'll see Ori zip over towards the Mirana, able to pull back Snaking, take him down. BKB pop from Boboka, he commits to bring down the Nimbus. Can they really keep this fight going, Aster? There's a pounce to the side, Skeeter. Keep his distance for now. Still, of course, has that Aegis. So even if they do catch him, they'll have to do it twice. Shadow Dance on cooldown. Still has the Death Shroud. Good pounce across the cliff. We're getting far enough away to TP out in the midst of the trees. They won't catch him. They're not getting anything big, Aster. And keep having to... They keep having to react to everything that Tundra's doing. They did buy a gem a few moments ago to at least try to see anything that's coming from Tundra. But as we mentioned earlier, once you start getting this lead on Tundra, it's small, less than 1k, but it feels like it's a lot more because now full ward coverage, it's yeah. gone. Aster, they don't see almost anything on the map. I really like the itemization as well on Tundra, especially the one that's coming out next. So currently, I think Aster are, you know, realizing that, okay, we need to set up, set up our Shadow Fiend for success. They're building double Halberd. Yep. Because later on, I mean, who's going to deal damage on Aster out, you know, through BKB as well? It's only SF. Oh. In. Ori. Saxa, he's got the set up. The oh, pass there followed up. Ori. Picked off here by Skeeter and Saxa. Uh, he's got to be careful here. Any sort of setup from the Blink Tiny. You know, all that Skeeter has to do is get that angle, and with the Agnum's Pounce, you'll always have that follow-up lockdown. Honestly, Saxa, as soon as Saxa really got the Blink Dagger, it feels like the whole game has turned around. He's been able to make all these plays, catching every single time under the Storm Spirit. What? He has been playing phenomenal. And then next, right, he gets the Force F to always disengage. Oh, yeah. They have the map pressure with the Brood, Slark with the Vision, Zeus with the D Ward, and then global bonus damage from Zeus. They're setting each other up so well for success in this game. And he even now has a secondary Force, force step. Of course, he got the Ogre Seal Totem, so another way to Radiance kind of disengage and continue these types the of plays that they've been doing. I feel that Tundra's been able to find successful yeah. pickoffs time after time. Okay. It's just out of range of the true side that they had down. Whoops. Tried to go for the courier there. Top lane, same time. Pressure from the spiders coming in. Tier two. Getting very low. Or he will be able to clean out the push in time. Skeeter almost has his BKB done, which is going to make his life. I mean, he can just full commit onto the Shadow Fiend then, pretty much every single one of these. Yeah, I, I don't see how the Skeeter dies anymore once yeah. he has BKB. It, he would have to make a really big mistake, which, you know, at this point, he's not going to. Also, he has Pipe, Grave Pact, Halberts, like backing him up. So there is even room for, you know, to be. For him to be a little more greedy, but same story for Aster. The game definitely falling a little bit out of their hands, and they need to claim one of these next fights with a good start. How is Monet going to be able to focus fire anything versus the Halberds? <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> They're really just going to put so much attention on them. And yeah, the second one is soon finished up. Aster have to start finding something. Oh, going to he's going to be the one to start things off. 
Heads up into the high ground, but immediately gets burst down to less than half his HP. Gets the BKB off, will be able to retreat. Skeeter commits it with the Shadow Dance, turns over towards Baboka, who tries to chase down Saxa under his BKB with the ultimate, but Baboka just taking too much physical damage through it. He'll attempt to get away, but the pounce is back up and ready as the BKB comes to an end. And Asta not able to start off that fight in what already felt like a bit of an awkward position, but I think that's very much a telltale of sort of the, the state that Asta feel they're in. They're trying to make these risky moves trying to head in these spots of the map that we've seen for a long time now. That area has just not been safe at all for them. They need to, like, Ori, you can see he's so hesitant to jump now. No BKB ready. Soon gonna have it, but can't jump in. He knows he's just gonna get comboed and burst down, so Baboka jumps in. This is what we were saying that he kind of has to do. He has to be this sacrifice to maybe allow Ori to look for something to jump, but Ori, he didn't see an option to go for. Yeah, like, I think at this point, with you being so... You need to wait for it. I don't want the answer to make any more aggressive moves until you have this BKB up on yeah. Ori, because it, it's just too hard. Like, you can Ready see it there. Sure, you're like, oh, I'll jump attack. in for you, but even then, like, it's not nicely set up with a smoke, so it just fails instantly. And look for the setup from the low ground. Taxa trying to get the opening on towards Monet. Skeeter, he's in and he's out. Just thinking about that. Maybe going in again. I mean, still has that Aegis for 20 seconds. Not too long, mind you. Quick check there as well from Tundra, just to make sure that Asta weren't attempting to sneak out of the base, catch them from the side. We'll see if this maybe gives Asta a bit of an opportunity to make a move. Now, Aegis expired, BKB on Ori. They'll look to make the move. Let's see if he can find anything. Let's see if they get those BKBs off pre hoppers too, to make sure that they have that damage if they do grab a target. Again, this area, it's been a bit of a death trap. Time and time again for Aston. Let's see if it's any different this time around. They get in with the opening over towards 33, but 33 pushed down to the side. The fear's there, though. Pushing they back the spider, they take him down. Now they'll turn over towards Skeeter. Skeeter, shadow dance to the ready, commits in over towards Siamese Cat. Siamese Cat falls. Still, though, Skeeter's going to be surrounded. It's done indeed. Ori's in trouble. They'll turn to force him out the side, but Skeeter's oh able God. to finish him off. Double kill for the Slark. That's Tundra. Now back off for now, but Skeeter's still very, very strong. Pounce over to Ward. XXS. He needs help. He needs it now. Monet trying to get involved in the fight, but he's already been disarmed. He's got a few raises for her over towards Saxa. But Skeeter, him. he's just taking them down one by one. Triple kill for him. Astra, they may have got the spider, but they get nothing else, and they lose four. Ultra kill for Skeeter. Oh, my. I mean, the way that they're just ping-ponging back yeah. and forth inside the fight. Also, I mean, this arrow, it goes in. I think it, like, weaves... You see all these like, spiders coming in. I think you didn't even see the arrow because of all the spiders, and it just hits perfectly onto Ori. I mean, Tundra, they're playing. It's just beautiful to watch. Like, when you see a high-level Dota, which this is, you know, helping each other with the four staffs, you go in as much as you can, 3-3 with the buyback, clutch spell usage, ultra kill for Skeeter, 40 stacks on the essence shift, backed up by all these auras now. It's just it's so hard for Astro. Like, if you're Monet, you kind of got to feel for him. This guy's top net worth 201, but he, he just can't do anything. Tundra just styling on him. He can't hit anybody. He starts hitting one person, one person gets forced out. Someone else, like, another guy, Ogre Seal, totems away from him. Zeus jumps away, can't stick on targets. And Ori, oh, he just keeps getting caught. Bounce. Oh my, he doesn't even get the nine, oh. nine right now, someone. Oh my god, what a lightning bolt. What the hell? Well, that's one way to die. <laughs> I mean, he just, he used the BKB right at the end, too. So six, even when he respawns, 30 seconds, no BKB. Another Rax potentially in jeopardy. Tundra Radiant playing out of their minds. So there's anything Asta can do here with just the four of them to stop a second set of barracks falling. I guess uh, Monet can go up and hit this Lark a bit. Hope he, he doesn't get twice. back. Oh, the Poker's okay. gonna jump in. He's in with the BKB. Pops the ult as well. Look at the ball, Skeeter. But Skeeter's just having a turn and get with the oh passions. He can just stand his ground against Bavoka. Jumps in over towards XXS. XXS will manage to get back towards the fountain. Asta, they won't lose anyone. Off the back of that Monet. Monet. He's got to be careful. Nearly finds himself back underneath Nimbus. Will manage to force back safety with the Hurricane Pike. He'll live. But the barracks do go down. Tundra able to clean up a second set. And the worst feeling ever. He gets poked and prodded enough for him to have to force that BKB again. And Tundra, they're just going to keep applying the pressure. Sure, they're a little limited on mana, but they can easily go for this tier too. And yeah, the avalanche toss combo hits three. You can yeah. see like everybody's down to like sub 50% HP. Can't actually chase forward on Aster. And now for Tundra. Take two racks, take the top tier two, keep the triangle occupied, and now if they have a freebie, you know, they'll take it. Otherwise, second Roche up within the next two minutes, so you can just play the map, play as you have. And overall, the way that Tundra play, I feel like their strength, team fighting, spell usage, the itemization, it's 
it's just incredible and beautiful to watch. Yeah, I mean, it's really been for, what, 16 minutes now. That even when they were at a 6K gold deficit, they were still winning every single one of these engagements. Look at this. Unbelievable. Finding themselves some pretty amazing neutral items as well. We see the telescope picked up. So they're going to be able to keep that distance, of course, even more on that Zeus. And now he does hit level 20, so even more stun's going to be coming out from those lightning bolts, making it even harder for Ori. As if it hasn't already been hard enough. Spell Prism as well, also a nice oh one for the squad. They're getting blessed. And Bling Dagger done on nine, so not always going to be a guaranteed opportunity for Ori to go straight for him. Quick on the Bling, he can make sure that the first attempt will end up missing. And now look at the itemization also from 33, right? After he's got his halberd, all those other items, has an Aeon Disc now. He knows yep. he's the attention that they're going for every single time. If they try to focus onto him this time, he'll just unlock it. Kind of break all that initiation that'll come out from Aster. Oh. And Aster fully trapped in their base. Aster have a 3% chance of winning, and I feel like the these 3%, the only way they can make this happen, you have Ori Pharma buyback, you have XXS Pharma buyback, you smoke into the Roche, they both suicide the base spells, and He's they come back. Stepping outside of the base, this is... DD Slark. Tundra, which I have the luxury of considering Roshan. will be up very, very shortly. Yep, they've got the spiders scouting in there the whole time. And then just keeping Aster constricted in the base. An MKB, I mean, like we said, Monet, he still continues to be very far. He just cannot stick on targets. It's, I, I don't think it's too hard for him. Like, I, yeah. if I had to give the specialty of Tundra, I feel like they're the best team at not hard committing into a fight. It's constant soft commit, helping each other out, baiting a BKB here, baiting an ult there, force step out, then go back in. They're so good at playing these long fights. And I think Aster, it might be hard to contest this Roche, but I don't see how you get back into Radiant this game if you don't. Scanning. Full Scotty now for the Slark. Look at this lane ward. The book is just gone. And maybe more Saxa. He's able to get an the connection onto the Orbs. Mone Mone gets the BKB off. He's trying to run, but Skinner's chasing him down. Mone's out of the game. So is XXS. Neither with buyback. The two supports done as well. They've got buybacks themselves. It's but it's a dive back from the book. GG is called. Tundra will take game two. And with that, the series it's theirs 2 0. They'll be moving up to the upper bracket finals to face Team Secret. I mean, what a masterclass, really. 6K deficit, they didn't seem to be phased by it whatsoever. Win every single engagement afterwards when they get the tiny blink dagger. I mean, yeah, Tundra, they're really on another level of stuff, and they're really displaying the understanding of really how to... I mean, we've seen it now a couple of times, of course, on main stage, but how to really brutalize Shadowfiend. Monet almost had a free game for the whole time and wasn't able to do much of anything with it.